board. Welcome. I'm so grateful to be included in this prestigious conference. In 2019, I presented at this conference as well. And at that time, I was in the process of also developing a movie on the subject I'm talking about today. And the result of that is I brought a film crew with me to the conference, which led to this. Beauty is in the brain of the beholder, and our brains are more similar than they're different. I hate to break it to you, we evolve without buildings, and the brains and bodies we have arrive in the world expecting not to see buildings. We're really about living in the wild. Beauty is not dependent on the human things, but anything that is described as beauty is described through the lens of being a human. You respond to the patterns through your visceral responses, your, your biological responses, and the result is a wonderful experience that you feel by logic. You feel subconsciously. The sensibilities of how our bodies feel comfort as we progress through a building move in and out from one space to the next, a sense of shifting perspective. Architecture is really more than just a functional space because we consume buildings, we don't experience building. Clearly, architecture has ramifications on our health and we need to understand what are the ideas that support health and well-being. The urban environment matters for mental physical health we need to empirically care about that and understand about it. The exciting thing is we are starting out to have that public debate. We need to respond to the people who are going to be using these places and we need to study these people, we need to analyze what's going on in their head and we need to make that a big part of the design process going forward. Well, that was the trailer for our film, Built Beautiful, featuring Ann Sussman and Justin Hollander and Dr. Anjan Chatterjee and others. And well, this film has had quite a lot of success since its debut, which is indicative of a thirst that society has for seeking and embracing the health improving feelings that result from the emotional experience of beauty, and pleasure. So to help things help get things started, I'm going to start with this image. The sites shown here are some of humankind's most iconic and beautiful buildings. The structures are objects of our worldwide attention and we strive to emulate them and we seek to learn from them as well. Well, two questions to ask here is why do we take such extraordinary care with these buildings and why are we compelled to seek them out? Today, we will look into those answers. And the answers have to do with something we instinctually seek every minute of every day. They relate to a powerful concept that says that beauty and pleasure are necessary and important components of our world that we fundamentally rely on in order to achieve a proper physiological and neurological balance. And that balance is known as homeostasis. The title of my talk today is Beauty and Pleasure as Key Components of a Balanced Nervous System. In order to highlight this concept, I will start with a couple of questions. Have you ever been in a room that you didn't want to leave? Have you known a building or a piece of art that you went out of your way to experience on a routine basis? A more general question is, are we subliminally aware of buildings that we routinely engage with? This is the power of architecture and design at work, and neuroscience is unlocking the ideas of art and architecture that have such an effect on us and why they do. Frankly, it's an instinctual drive that we all share, our drive to achieve good health and well-being. 
Think of it this way. When you're ill, your primary focus is to regain your health. Or when you're under stress, your primary goal is to relieve the stress. Well, this is common to all cultures and all humans. And it is this drive to achieve good health that leads us to pleasure and beauty. Let's take a look at the neuroscience that supports this concept. Our brains process a staggering 11 million bits of information per second. And these bits upon arrival from our nervous system are immediately filtered into two categories of subliminal emotions. And those are survival and pleasure. Important for this discussion is to know that survival is a stress response and pleasure is a relaxation response. Well, a healthy nervous system achieves balance when the flow of stress and relaxation inputs is in a state of equilibrium. That's known as homeostasis. A life that's all stress is out of balance as we know. Well, likewise, a life that's all relaxation is equally out of balance. Stress makes us stronger and pleasure mitigates the negative components of stress. It is literally a balancing act where one input complements the other. Well, it is this balancing of the two input streams that is of interest to us today because this is where architecture and design often falls short. Far too often, the emphasis is on generating unique stress-inducing inputs with very little emphasis on pleasure-inducing inputs. This leads to an unbalanced nervous system which can have catastrophic health ramifications leading to chronic inflammation, autoimmune and neurodegenerative disorders, a downregulated immune system, cardiovascular disease, and cancer, to name just a few. Clearly a situation that we should strive to avoid, and we can by simply increasing our focus on generating a pleasure reaction in our designs with a stronger focus on coherent patterns that include beauty inputs. Well, following that, I will show you three pattern types that exemplify a balance of pleasure, beauty, inputs. This pattern is rooted in biophilia, and because of this, it is a good example of a pattern that elicits a pleasure response. This is a pattern that we evolved with, a tree canopy, perhaps one of the first places of refuge for humankind, signaling stress relief and a feeling of safety and rest and relaxation. The patterns that make up this scene are non-threatening, coherent, and recognizable, which are the fundamental qualities that support a beauty reaction. This pattern is rooted in biomorphic qualities, and because of this, it is a good example of a pattern that elicits a pleasure response. It's a pattern that signals protection and draws you in because it is non-threatening, coherent, and made of recognizable geometric patterns that are similar to a human body. This room, too, is a refuge and generates a beauty reaction. In viewing this slide again, which is the third pattern type, because the images are non-threatening, coherent, and recognizable, your brain is able to quickly and efficiently process the images being presented, allowing you to relax, which, relieve, which leads to a release of feel-good hormones resulting in a sense of comfort and well-being. That is a beauty response, and that is why each of these structures are called Beautiful. Well, what if I told you that all of these buildings shown here contain the same geometric pattern that your brain instantaneously recognizes as a beauty pattern? And that pattern has broad ramifications for architecture and design. And it is a pattern that all humans recognize and respond to every day of our lives. When a child is born, 65% of the neuronal structure of the newborn is dedicated to facial recognition. As Charles Darwin stated, a child must find a face to survive. The child is also driven to engage with the face, which results in bonding and pleasure. Well, because upon birth, the survival instinct is so strong, the child is frantically 
looking up and down, left and right, everywhere, searching for this single image. Two dark spots up high and one dark spot centered below, representing two eyes and a mouth, as shown in this image. This image is what a child first sees when born and for the first few months thereafter. Well, here's a geometric representation of those three dark spots. And while this geometric pattern aligns with a famous pattern known as the three by three, or more generally known as the nine square. We'll note the three dark spots are upper left, upper right, and bottom center positions. And here is the three by three pattern standing on its own. It is this three by three pattern that shows up in our art and architectural compositions over and over, and it has for thousands of years. Here's an example of it being applied to one of the images from my first slide. Also note that the two towers in the main entry portal are the upper left, upper right, and bottom center patterns. And why is the facial pattern important? Because during the period of bonding and nurturing that occurs between parent and child, the child learns to associate the three by three facial pattern with love, trust, and pleasure as the result of the bonding that occurs. Thus, when the pattern presents itself in different ways later in our lives, the same pleasure reward mechanism is subliminally initiated, resulting in a physical beauty response. And then returning to this room I featured earlier, the room is filled with patterns we recognize, including biophilic, biomorphic, and the three by three pattern with the upper left, upper right, and bottom center patterns. This room is sending a continuous stream of pleasure inputs, soft light, recognizable geometry, flowers, and water. All of these elements send pleasure signals. Concisely, this room would be good for the occupant's health and well being. It's a powerful message that neuroscience is delivering. Architecture can positively impact our health and well being. And this message is thrusting architects and designers into a profoundly important new role as leaders of the health and well being movement worldwide. I know that many in the audience today are committed to creating beauty. This is such important work you are doing, more important than you might realize. You are literally supporting and improving the overall health of society and your clients as well. Well, now returning to the two questions I started today's talk with, why do we take such extraordinary care with the buildings in the first slide? And why are we compelled to seek them out? It's a single answer for both questions. The buildings in the slide are composed of patterns that initiate the feelings of rest and relaxation and pleasure. These feelings ultimately leads to a rebalanced nervous system and the physiological state of homeostasis. Well, this in turn results in satisfying a fundamental need of humankind that we all seek every minute of every day, and that is the need to feel well. So we seek these buildings out and take great care with them because they make us feel well, they support our health and well-being, and they bring us pleasure by rebalancing our nervous system to counteract the stresses of everyday life. In other words, the answer is they're special to us because they are beautiful. In closing, I'll say science is pointing the way to understanding the feeling of beauty and the importance and design to achieve homeostasis. We should use this knowledge to better our world. The health and well being of society will be better for it. Finally, I want to express my gratitude to the conference organizing committee for giving me the opportunity to present this work to you. It's been an honor to be with you today. Thank you so much. <laughs>